stop the clocks, the bees are humming In between the contrasts of our souls So we're in Car Manor again and Adam's been showing me some of the shots that he took last time. So what I thought I'd do is I'd take the same shot as he got. Because I'm no expert on woodland photography, it might help get my eye in to see the scenes in front of me. So I've taken that shot. If it's turned out well, I'll put it up now. Even if it hasn't, I'll put it up anyway, just so you get the idea. Um, but I just think it might, be, it might be a help to try and copy somebody else so that you get the feel and, and basically what you're looking for in the image. So I think, I think the thing is with this woodland photography that I'm finding is I think you really have to give yourself enough time just to wander around, look for compositions. I think that's part of the problem I've maybe had in the past is that I've just gone crashing in there and, and expected to come out with a great photograph. But I, I think you really have to invest some time into it, search around and find out scenes and maybe find something and just work on it, concentrate on it to get the picture. So what I'm finding, it's easier to leave stuff out of woodland photography than it is to keep it in. So the more you take it out and simplify the scene, the better the image is looking to me. I've just found this this little bit of fall colour here up against this tree and I'm just trying a couple of shots here and see how it works out. It's quite bright out there though that's the only thing and I probably could have done with a bit of bit of fog in the background just to separate it a bit more but we'll see how it turns out. All right so Paul has found a really pretty scene there's a uh... There's a couple of uh, Sitka spruce here. One's bigger than the other one. And uh, there's a bit of yellow 
full colour. And I guess what attracts you to the scene, Paul? Well, it's, it's a bit of the fall colour and it's the, uh, it's the moss as well. It's the moss on the trees. But was it the light on the, or just the fall colour? I think it was the light on the fall colour because it was almost making it glow. Yeah. Yeah. So one of, the, one of the things I often look for in a forest scene is not necessarily the subject matter, but I just go for whatever the light's doing. So in this case, um, you know, Paul was attracted to the, to the, the full colour, but also because it has a bit of a clearing behind it, so it's slightly backlit. So you, you tend to be drawn to those brighter areas in the frame. So that's what I base my compositions on. Now, initially, okay, so when you first saw that, what was your initial reaction as far as photography goes? Like what? I thought it might be a bit busy at first, yeah. but I, I like the scene and I like those three trees. So I was going to try and frame it with one either side. I didn't quite know. So the trees, are, uh, so you went right up to the trees? Or? I went right up in close with the wide angle at first, but I think it was probably too close. Right. So, okay, so then, because Paul found this and then I kind of wandered over and, to see what he was doing. And my initial reaction was I, I really quite like the full colour as well. So I took a shot of just the full colour with some mossy trees. And it looks okay on the back of the camera, but then... In front of us, there's another uh, Sitka spruce. It's quite large and it has these sweeping uh, roots that come down and kind of curve underneath the whole scene. And there's some sword ferns mixed in there as well. So I made the suggestion that maybe rather than just have the fall color with the, the um, conifers as the main scene or the main subject, maybe try and frame it somehow so that uh, it's not just a tree with four colors. Have, yeah. have this sweeping root in the foreground and it kind of frames half of the scene anyway. And then the other hard thing about forest photography is trying to eliminate all the clutter because naturally most forests are really busy. So you just kind of have to zero in on the most interesting parts and simplify, just keep moving around inch by inch and yeah and simplifying and trying to fit all the elements that you have in the frame uh, into the into the photograph. And if it doesn't fit, then try and eliminate it. So what I like about this scene is I like the the moss on the trees, the little saplings, yeah. and then the full color, and then the, the two Sitka spruce in the back. But I also like this big Sitka spruce in the foreground. But I probably wouldn't include the whole thing, maybe just... Slice it in half almost. Yeah, slice it in half. So it gives the suggestion that this tree is larger than it really is. Because even though it is a, a very large tree, it's not the biggest tree in the area here. So if you just cut it in half, and it, people don't really know how big that tree keeps yeah. going on. But um, I don't know. I mean, it might, it might end up being a bit busy. I'm not sure. I mean, not all these scenes turn out the way you think they're going to. But I think with a, a bit of careful dodging and burning... You could probably darken the whole area around yeah. full color and then just have that as the as the highlight of the of the frame. Okay. So close your eyes. Do you feel the same? Only thing that matters. So we've finished shooting down in the bottom there. We're just making our way back up towards the car park because it's a pretty long drive to get in here. It's about three to four hours to get in here because it's all on logging roads. But it's absolutely beautiful in here. You could spend hours, probably days in here looking at various compositions. Absolutely beautiful. And it's really helped me spend a bit of time with Adam in, in the forest to see how he goes about finding compositions. And I think I might have got some decent images today because of that, because I've picked up on a few tips uh, and a few helpers along the way. So with any luck, we'll have some cracking images out of today. So I think today I've pretty much learnt quite a lot about my woodland photography and I think it'll help me moving forward. It'll help me focus in on what to look for anyway. I already feel as though it's, I'm finding it slightly easy to look for compositions now which is way better than I was managing before. I was just walking up a woodland and I didn't even know where to look, let alone what to shoot. So what have I learned from today? Well, what I've learned is, is basically the way Adam works is 
he shoots for the light and not necessarily for the subject. So that's really helped me focus in and try and look where the light's, what it's directed on in the forest and concentrate on that and find a subject round the light. So how do you think today's gone? How did that today go? Uh, it went very well. Actually, it was um, surprisingly beautiful in there. That's some good, good images, do you think? I think so. It started off, uh, it was kind of a bit too, I don't know, it wasn't misty enough. Mm. And then as the day progressed, I think the light got better. Yeah, I think so. Got some nice light in there towards the end of the day. Yeah. A bit more fog would have been nice in amongst the nice light, but hey, you can't have everything there. No, you can't. You can't. <laughs> So yeah, I think I learned quite a bit today as well, because I've never, uh, I've really struggled in, in woodland photography before, to be honest. Well, I think most people do. The thing is, um, is uh, what I find helpful is just to just concentrate on the light, Paul. Mm. Well, I have noticed that because I was concentrating on finding the subject before and I, I was struggling really bad with it, to be honest. I never knew what to photograph because it just looks like a total mess to me when you go in. Well, it is, but if you... Just concentrate on small scenes rather than the whole scene. And I think you'll you know, well, do better. Yeah, we'll get there slowly but surely, eh? Yeah. Right, great. Well, thanks very much for watching, guys. If you aren't already, subscribe to Adam's channel, which you should be anyway. And I'll see you on the next one. Well, if you've liked this week's video, please like and subscribe. Join me on Facebook at Paul Thompson Photography. Join me on Instagram at Paul Thompson Photography. And I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye. Where have you gone, Adam? Adam. <laughs> Oi, Adam. <laughs> I'm confused. Where have you gone, Adam? I can hear you, I can't see you. Are you still there?